Hey everyone, today I'm going to review the Microsoft Surface Laptop. This was released in mid-2017, so my review is a bit late. Anyway, my review will be from the perspective of a graphic designer, someone who uses this to create digital art, who does some light photo editing. So today I'm going to show you how well this laptop is at performing those tasks. I'll be testing out several apps like Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Lightroom, and I'll be talking about things that uh, graphic designers, digital artists may want to know. This review may be a bit long, so if you want to save some time, you can actually check out my text review. And if I have any updates to my video review, I will put all that info in the text review. The link will be in the video description below. This is a 13.5 inch laptop that weighs 1.25 kg. I have been carrying this around to my office for a few days and I could barely notice the weight. So this is lighter compared to other 14 inch laptop models out there. The build quality is excellent. Brush aluminum on the front and back for rubber feet to prevent slip. And the fan grill is here. You can open the laptop with one hand. The resolution of this screen is 2256 by 1504. This is considered high resolution for a screen size like this. The pixel density is 201 ppi. It makes everything look very sharp. And the colors, they are fantastic. Let me show you um, the color calibration report. I color calibrated the screen with a Spider 5 Pro and these are the readouts that I got. 95% sRGB. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. So this screen, it supports touch gesture as well. This is a touch screen. 69% NTSC and 74% Adobe RGB. So at 95% sRGB, this is considered a pretty um, good screen in terms of color accuracy. Of course, it's not going to match those Adobe RGB screens, which are significantly more expensive for a laptop screen like this. 95% sRGB is considered quite adequate. You may also notice that the screen is quite reflective and that's because this is a glossy reflective screen. If you are working in an environment with a lot of lights above you, behind you, then there is going to be this kind of reflection. You can expect that. But this is not unexpected. Nowadays, a lot of laptops, they come with glossy screens. The typing experience on the keyboard is excellent. The keys, they are very clicky, they have very good travel, and they just feel really nice to type on. For those who use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, note that there is no control button here on the right side of the keyboard. The only control button is here. So when you're using a mouse, when you're using a stylus like this, you want to control um, shortcut like control O, open, print, Control plus minus to zoom in, zoom out. There is no control key. So this um, is a minor inconvenience. If you want to use the function keys here as normal function keys, just press this button here. It will light up and you will have access to F1 to F12. So if you use Photoshop, F5 will be for brush settings. You can press that for brush settings, F6 for color, F7 for layers. It's very convenient. With the function buttons off, you can use these shortcuts for changing brightness, media control, change the volume, print screen, home and pitch up and down. The trackpad is also great to click on. It has a very firm clicky feel. There is the left button and right button. And if you click here, well, um, you cannot click here. You have to click at the bottom area here. The trackpad is very responsive and very accurate. The last thing I want to talk about the keyboard area is of course this Alcantara fabric. This feels really nice to touch, really comfortable to rest the palm on while typing. The downside is it can collect grease, it can collect dirt and fabric like this. This is not easy to clean, not easy to wipe clean with a wet or damp cloth. So after a while, it will get dirty. I have seen people posting photos of their keyboard after a month or two and let's just say that it doesn't look as good as it is on day one. I wish Microsoft could have made this fabric replaceable so when it's dirty you just tear it off and replace it with a clean new one. Maybe with other colors, that would be terrific. 
The ports available on the Surface laptop are USB 3, mini display port, audio jack, this strange thing here, this is the Wi-Fi antenna. And here we have the power port. The power cable included is the same one from the Surface Pro. So this is magnetic, it's proprietary. You just slot it in, it's very easy. And this is the adapter, which comes with an extra USB 3 port. Let's talk about the specifications. So the processor options are the Intel i5 and i7. There is also an Intel M3. Do not get M3 because that is underpowered. So I would recommend getting i5 for things like photo editing, basic graphic design. If you want to do some lightweight video editing, you can get i7. These two are dual core processors running at 2.5 gigahertz. With the i5, it will turbo boost up to 3.1. With the i7, it goes up to 4.0. So this is the slightly better option for video editing, but I will not do 4K video editing on this laptop. For 1080p video editing, it's still uh, quite good enough, but don't do 4K. Even my desktop cannot handle 4K with quad-core processor. So uh, just like with video editing with this uh, laptop. Comes with option of 4 to 16 gigs of RAM. Again, do not get the lowest, the base model. Get at least 8 gigs of RAM or 16 gig if you have the budget. And the storage options are 128 gigs to one terabyte. Now, if you get the 128 gigs, Mm, you'll probably be left with 100 gigs there about after installing Windows 10 and the graphic apps because those things they take up storage space. So 100 gigs left is not really a lot because when you're working with photos, with, when you're working with 32 megs of uh, photos, hundreds of photos, they are going to take up a lot of space very quickly. So I do recommend you get at least 256 or if you have the budget, 512 um, gigs of storage. This laptop comes with Intel HD graphics um, 615 to 640. These are not dedicated graphics cards, so do not expect to be running 3D software like Maya, AutoCAD, 3D Max on the laptop. I'm sure they will run, but you are going to see the screen rotate very, you're going to see the models rotate very slowly and when you render, it's going to take a lot of time, it's going to be very frustrating. This is not the laptop for 3D work. This review unit that I received from Microsoft is running Intel i7, has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, runs Intel HD 640. I want to talk a bit more about the storage. Let me um, show you why. After the 512 gigs of SSD has been formatted, I'm left with only 475 gigs of actual space. And this laptop has been installed with Windows 10. I've installed several graphic apps, Photoshop, Lightroom. I've also transferred some of my graphic files from another computer over here. I've loaded up with some uh, raw photos and I have used up 60 gigs of storage so far. So if you get the 100 and 28 gigs of SSD storage, you will only have 108 gigs of actual space. And after installing Windows and all the software, you are probably going to be left with 88 gigs of actual storage space. So that is definitely not going to be enough if you use it for graphic design work. The files, the photo files, the video files from cameras like this nowadays, they can take up a lot of space. If I go out for a photo shoot, I can easily end up with four to eight gigs of photos, 10 to 20 gigs of videos. And after you import all that into this computer, into this laptop, um, that's not going to be a lot of storage left. Let's take a look at the pricing. So for the base model with the Intel Core M3, that's US $800. And then it goes all the way up to 2,700 US dollar. And that is for the Intel Core i7 model, which comes with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. Now remember the four gig memory models, uh, these two, they are to be avoided. It's best to get at least eight gigs of memory. 
All right, enough talk about the specification and design. Let's now focus on whether this is a laptop that is good enough for digital artists and graphic designers. Now I have installed Photoshop CC, Lightroom CC on this laptop. I have also installed an older version of Adobe Illustrator CS6. I want to show you the difference between the new software and the old software running on this screen. Before you can do all that, you need to install the software and before you can install the software, well, I have something to tell you. This laptop, it comes installed with Windows 10 in S mode. And with this version of Windows, you are only limited to using apps from the Microsoft Store. So if, you're, if the application that you're using is not available from the Microsoft Store, then there's no way to install it unless you upgrade Windows 10 S to Windows 10 Home or 10 Pro, which I have already done. It is really easy to upgrade. Um, when you try to install your desktop software, there will be a dialog box telling you that you cannot install, you need to upgrade. And there you just click OK, upgrade to Windows 10, and you'll be fine. So I have already installed some software. Let's launch Photoshop. I want to click on Photoshop here. I want to show you how much time it takes to launch Photoshop. All right. So this laptop, it uses SSD storage. It should launch the app quite fast. And this is actually quite fast. Although I have other computers that launch it faster, but this is more than satisfactory for me. And now let's open up some huge files and see um, the loading time. I'm going to open up four files. The first file is 900 megabyte. The three other files, they total 100 megabyte. So it's a total of one gig. So let me just control, click all the four files and click open. So this is how much time it takes to open up one gig of graphic files, which is quite good, it's quite fast. So this is the largest file that I have. This is 900 megabyte. Now as I press Ctrl plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out, notice that there is screen redraw. So it appears blocky. Um, well, this, this effect also appears with my Surface Pro, but on my more powerful desktop computer, I do not see the screen redraw like that. It's a minor annoyance but it still works. All right, so as I zoom in larger and larger, you can see the screen redraw a bit slower. Anyway, um, let me just move around. So as I move around, you can see the screen also um, is trying to redraw. So you can definitely work with large files, but um, there's going to be some screen redraw. And now I'm going to click on this hue adjustment layer. I want to adjust the hue to change the color here to let you see how fast it would update the colors on the fly. So let me just change the color. Notice the green area here as it changes color. There is some lag, but this is not too bad. This is still workable, usable. It's not frustrating or anything, just that it has some minor lag. The more important thing is I can drag this slider here very smoothly. With some slower computer, the computer will lag so much that you cannot even slide the slider. Or if you can slide the slider, the change on the screen it will be so slow, the changes will be so slow to reflect. But here it's quite okay. If you are working on a larger file, a file larger than one gig, maybe two gigs, then you can expect it to um, move a bit more slowly. Let's take a look at the RAM usage right now, the memory usage. So with Photoshop open and nothing else open, I'm using about 4.4 gigs of memory so far, and that includes Windows 10. I'm going to um, open up Adobe Illustrator CS6. This is this CS6 is an older version of um, Adobe CC. The first thing to note is this interface here. This is smaller compared to the Photoshop interface earlier, which was really big because Adobe CS6 
This software is not written for high resolution screens. So if you are using older software on a high resolution screen, the user interface, the buttons, the menus, the palettes, they are going to look smaller compared to the newer software. I mean, compare this palette size here, this palette area here to this area here. And also the menus, the buttons are uh, in the older software, they are a bit small. Um, I can still see them, but they are a bit small. So if you want to click on them accurately, you have to be a bit slower. And now I'm going to open up an Illustrator EPS file. The largest one is a 560 megabyte file. So let me just open that. I want to let you see how long it takes to open up a big file in Illustrator. It took a bit longer than I expected. Where's the mouse, by the way? Um, all right, the mouse is the mouse is here. Um, and another thing with older software is, I tried to um, pan around with my finger, but I am not able to do that because the older version of Adobe CS6, they do not support finger gestures, so you cannot pan around, you cannot zoom, you cannot rotate. The inability to use finger gesture is not really much of an issue with me because I prefer to use mouse and keyboard, especially when doing graphic design work. So here I am panning around the canvas area and the screen redraw is quite fast faster, much quicker compared to in Photoshop. I don't have any uh, major issues here. All right, with Illustrator, the screen redraw is much faster. No problems panning around. Graphic design with Illustrator or InDesign, any pitch layout. If you're using Adobe Flash, Adobe Animate, um, Dreamweaver, basically any of the text layout or pitch layout programs, not going to be a problem at all. Now with two graphic apps opened, I want to see how much memory I am using right now. I'm using 5.8 gigs of memory. Now I'm going to launch Adobe Lightroom CC. It launched quite quickly. I don't have any photos, so let me just import some photos. I have a folder of 100 raw files, so um, Let's import that. But before that, um, I want to show you how big those files are actually. So 100 raw files, they total 1.6 gigabytes. Let me just select all and import. With 95% sRGB, uh, this is an adequate screen uh, to work with for photo editing. So the files, they imported very quickly. Let's uh, use quick develop. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to click auto here to let it auto um, color correct everything. And well, it's done. It's that quick. Just that the individual photos, they will take some time to reflect the changes. colors they look great on this screen the resolution is very high for a screen like this so I can really see the details no problem zooming in into the details this 100 files they total up to 1.6 gig each file is about 17 to 18 megabytes so I'm going to export this at default setting 60% JPEG. I'm going to use a stopwatch and time it. So let's go. It took four minutes to export 100 raw files, so that's like 240 seconds. If I were to export 10 raw files, that would take me about 24 seconds thereabouts, which is not too bad. Now this laptop, this particular model runs the Intel i7 dual core 2.5 gigahertz. If you are getting the i5, the performance will be pretty similar compared to um, the i7 when it comes to exporting photos. 
But if you want to do some 1080p video editing, it's best to get the i7. And while it was exporting earlier, I could hear the fans are turning up. You can hear the fans, but it's not um, that noisy. So with ambient noise, I could barely hear the fans at all. So now I have three apps open, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Illustrator. Let's check out the memory usage. So now I'm using 8.1 gigs of memory. And now I want to open up a digital drawing app called Midibank Paint Pro. This is a free app that you can use to draw manga, comics. I want to show you this app because I want to show you um, how the screen works with the stylus. This screen is compatible with the Surface Pen which costs US $99. I think I lost my Surface Pen somewhere. So I have this Surface Pen alternative which is less than US $40 and it performs quite similarly to the Surface Pen. It's a good thing to have competition so you can get products at a more competitive price. So um, let's try and draw something. So you can draw on the screen with the stylus. There is pressure sensitivity as well. But drawing on the screen, it feels a bit awkward because as you're drawing, the screen would wobble. You can hold it like this, put your hand on the back but it still feels awkward. It's like holding onto a hardcover sketch pad or writing pad while you're standing and writing at the same time. It feels exactly like that. The only difference is, well, this laptop is on the table, so most of the weight is supported on the table, but it still feels a bit awkward. So pressure sensitivity works quite well. There is no lag whatsoever when drawing. And the stylus is very accurate. This particular app supports finger gestures as well. Since it can draw, you can definitely use this to take notes as well. It's very accurate. There is almost no parallax because the glass surface is very close to the actual screen itself. There is also palm rejection. So when you're drawing, there is not going to be any stray strokes. In fact, now I'm resting my palm on the screen and there are no stray strokes. So um, that is great. The Surface Laptop is not the right product for drawing because, well, it is a laptop. This app is sketchable, by the way. So as I write, you can see how much the screen wobbles. If you want to use the stylus to touch up certain areas in the photo to do some simple photo editing, I think that is actually a very good use case uh, for the stylus. Or if you just want to take some notes, do some casual doodling, or if you want to sign off some uh, digital PDF documents, um, that's also a good use case for the stylus. And now I have two apps running, Photoshop and Lightroom. Let's take a look at how much memory I'm using. 6.1 gigs of memory. Now usually I will have Chrome open, so let me just uh, open up Chrome. And now I have Photoshop opened, I have Adobe Lightroom with 100 photos, I have Google Chrome open in the background with 6 tabs, I'm using 7.5 gigs of memory. So if you want to get a laptop for graphic design work, for photo editing, or even for some light video editing, I would recommend you get at least 8 gigs of memory. If you can afford it, definitely go up to 16 gigs. When you run out of memory, things are going to get a bit sluggish, like editing photographs, the changes they may not reflect as well. When you add more and more layers, the file will become bigger and bigger, and the performance will get slower and slower. So um, get uh, more RAM if you can. So is the Surface Laptop good enough for graphic design work? photo editing or simple um, digital art creation, I would say yes, the performance is quite decent with the apps that I have uh, shown you earlier. There is some slight lag with some of the software, but not really that frustrating to me because I have used even slower computers before. So with the SSD storage, with the 16 gigs of RAM here, um, performance is quite decent, so definitely no problem for um, graphic design work. Now for the type of work that I do, which is print design, 
I need to compare um, what I see on the screen versus a printed proof. And with this particular laptop at 95% sRGB, this is good enough for um, basic graphic design work. When I need to compare printed proofs, I will always connect my uh, laptop to an external monitor, which has 100% Adobe RGB support. And I'm glad to say that there is one mini display port here so I can connect this directly to my monitor to check colors. But other than that, the number of ports on this laptop is quite minimal. Mini display port and uh, USB 3, well, um, it's very minimal. It would have been better if there are a few more ports here. The lack of any USB type C ports on this laptop is not really an issue for me because I still use a lot of devices that use the USB type 3 like the color calibrator, my mouse receiver, the keyboard Logitech receiver, my camera, scanner, my external hard drive. Basically all those devices that I have bought within the last five years, they are they are all using this USB port, so um, the lack of any USB-C, not really a problem for me. Although it would be uh, great to include uh, for Microsoft to include uh, more ports. And another thing that Microsoft could do is really to uh, include a micro SD card slot or an SD card slot somewhere. With a micro SD card slot, you can basically expand the storage beyond what is available on the laptop. They have that micro SD card slot on the Surface Pro and that um, is really helpful, really convenient because you can get really cheap um, storage expansion with those um, tiny micro SD cards. The last thing I want to mention is the battery life which is surprisingly good. Microsoft states that it has 14 hour battery life which is ridiculous. The actual battery life in real life is about 7 to 10 hours depending on the type of work that you do. So if you are just using Google Chrome, you are just watching YouTube videos, 10 hours, 9-10 hours, no problem at all. If you are doing photo editing, video editing, then 7-8-9 um, hours, no problem at all. And that is quite decent for a laptop this size. So, Battery life is not something that I would worry with this. So that's all for my review today. If I have any updates to my video review, I will put all of that info in my text review. The link will be in the video description below. And one last thing is, um, if you happen to be using the Surface laptop for graphic design work, I would love to hear from you. I would uh, love to hear from uh, your experience, whether uh, you like it or not. Alright, I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!